go around the room and get an idea of who I have in the room so I can kind of tailor a little bit about what your job title is, uh, who you are, and, and to, you know, what we're going to be talking about uh, here as well. So I'm, I'm Chris Bates. I'm with the uh, Time Warner Cable Cloud Business Unit called Navisite. Um, you know, we, and, and we'll, I'll get into a little bit more probably about uh, who Navisite is and some of the services that we offer. Um, and with me is John Moore. He is the sales manager for the vertical government education space for Time Warner Cable. He has a whole team reporting up through him that supports you know, everybody, everybody in the room here. John, I don't know if you want to add anything else or no, no, just, it's always like great being Nickel Jesus. This is our, I, I can't count how many years we've been coming to this event. We've been uh, platinum sponsors for the last five or six years. So uh, it's great to have you guys here. We appreciate you coming and choosing to come listen to what we have to say. I've been with Time Cable Business Class for about 14 and a half years. So I've been around a while and focused on government education for uh, most of that period. So we're going to next. Uh, Ryan Rand, Sid Rowley. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm Tony Davis with Durham County uh, ICT, and I am the platform manager. You work for John Light? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we platform manager, is that like the IT infrastructure? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, storage and servers, those okay. type of things. And also, we have cloud solutions all for CC5, so we can handle that piece. Okay. Great club from Durham County. Great way to Been around 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. Where was your name here? Yeah. Kid, you got to He was. Oh. Okay. Matt Barrazzo, Town of Cary, Co Communication Balance. Town of Cary, Top. John, Ted. You better get my stuff straight, all right? No, I'm just kidding. Start the back, look at it. Christopher Spark, City of Winston, project manager there. City where? City of Winston. Winston? Yeah. Okay. talk about today um, is infrastructure as a service and that includes a lot of stuff but um, I'm going to give you a high level on who Navisite is and some of the other services that we provide. So infrastructure as a service is kind of give you an idea deals with storage, um, virtual compute um, and I'm going to tailor this around uh, today you know, it's going to have a lot of uh, time where Navisite stuff involved, but it's going to be more generalized to to the industry as well. So, if you have any questions, you know, pop them out. And we'll get we'll address them for sure. So, so Navisite, who we are? Um, they say it was subsidiary of uh, Time Warner Cable, but we're the cloud business unit of Time Warner Cable. We were acquired in 2011, um, targeting. Uh, Verticals in healthcare, verticals in the government education space, enterprise mm -hmm. business, bid markets, um, that's our, you know, our sweet spot. Um, some of our key offerings, you know, managed manage hosting, uh, infrastructure as a service, desktop as a service, multiple managed applications, and we'll get into a little bit more of this. We have nine data centers across the U.S. and four cloud uh, pods, or nine data centers across uh, seven in the U.S., two and in the UK. Cloud node in the UK, uh, two cloud nodes in the UK and two in the US as well. So that's where, uh, where we host our infrastructure and service. So 
like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through this, uh, but I just wanna give you an idea of what type of services uh, NowSite does provide co-location, managed server, managed database, managed security, managed storage, network, managed application. So you see a lot of, we do a lot of managed uh, hosting product. That's, that's where we began uh, in, the, in the managed services space. So uh, we really do a focus in on Oracle Suite, uh, PeopleSoft, um, HR applications when it comes to management, SQL databases as well. Um, part of, you know, when we, when we talk about managed services, we also, when you sit Office 365, we're seeing a huge trend of people going with Office 365 as it relates to end of life servers, you know, when it's time to renew that EA agreement with Microsoft. Um, it's, you know, people always want to look at, you know, what's the ROI on a, on a software as a service like Office 365. We combine it all. You know, with infrastructure as a service as well, you're looking at eliminating a lot of times that SQL licensing uh, that you have. And so when you couple that with the software as a service, it could really be huge cost savings depending on, um, you know, your agreements with Microsoft, where that's going. So, Today we're going to, we're really going to focus in on uh, infrastructure as a service, self-service cloud, and the managed cloud as well. So desktop as a service, um, VMware Horizons is what we're, uh, what our, our package is that we use there. And like I said, uh, you know, managed from a managed application service. Um, one one thing that we 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 do, uh, not a lot of people are still doing it, is um, IBM Notes and then Domino. So, and we can help with the migration path from notes to exchange, which a lot of people are, are, are getting into these days as well. They're starting to find it to be a real headache. Along with our uh, TWC uh, Time Warner Cable product set, you know, we can do an end-to-end -end, uh, Solution for you guys, SLAs to 5.9 end to end, and that's you know industry leading uh, SLA. You know when it comes to availability, all the way from the cloud back to your premises. So now we're going to get into a little bit more about what the data center looks like. Uh, you know your traditional IT infrastructure, where you're literally building out um, your own data center, your own infrastructure. Um, you're looking at it at a three to five year. Uh, peak capacity. So when you go out to acquire uh, in the traditional environment, you're going out to acquire for three to five years in the future. You're laying out a lot of that capital uh, to, to go out and acquire this equipment, um, whether it be you know, your, your Microsoft licensing uh, or whatever licensing that may be. Um, Microsoft and Oracle being the two biggest that we see that are, that are very expensive. Um, you know, you're actually out there purchasing the servers, you're out there purchasing the storage. You're not taking into consideration the power and the real estate that it takes to, to put these things in place. Um, and so, in today's environment, you know, what, we're not saying, hey, do away with that completely because there's applications out there that just don't run the cloud. You know, uh, a lot of times you, you're looking at an Oracle application, you might, have to be running on site or maybe even co locate that Oracle database next to your cloud environment to create a hybrid environment. You know, the, the ability to build a virtual environment as you need per application um, that's what infrastructure as a service really is. So when you're able to go out and say, hey, I need, I'm going to, I'm going to build out an infrastructure um, to where uh, I need six servers, and each of these servers require you know, two, two uh, cores, six cores, eight cores, a certain amount of RAM, you know, whether it be uh, four gig, eight gig, 10 gig. This is, these are the things in the virtual environment that you can actually create yourself, it doesn't matter. And scale those applications, those virtual machines, and the compute resources as you need. So we'll, get, we'll dig in a little bit deeper on that as well. So, like I said, um, this, this is what makes up <clears throat> an infrastructure as a service in a virtualized environment. You have your, your virtualized servers, uh, like I said, your, your memory, your RAM, your storage, and your bandwidth. Uh, all of these are scalable and on demand. Um, 
and you pay for them as you use them. So whatever you're not using, you're not paying for it. Um, you can literally you know, set scripts to set up, turn your servers on at 7 o'clock in the morning and turn them off at 7 o'clock at night. Turn them on as you know, auto automate the process to where as you walk in the door at 7 o'clock, they shut, come on, and as you're leaving at night, they shut down. If that's what you wanted to do, and that's how you wanted to save money as well. Some of the, uh, the key benefits, and I'm going to couple a lot of these together. Um, so, increased spending, uh, predictability, improved cost efficiencies. Um, you know, these are, these are you know, cost savings measures. You know, you're able to, you know, from a, a predictability, you're able to say, hey, this application is costing me this amount per, per month. So, if you have a, a cost center and you're billing back, you can say, hey, to run this application for HR, it's costing me $358 per month. Well, if I want to make some money off of that, then I'll say, you know, 400 bucks a month, whatever, and bill it back to HR, get your revenue back. Or, for budgeting purposes, you can say, hey, this is what it costs me per month to run this application. Multiply, please. So, um, business agility, uh, operation efficiencies, rapid provisioning, uh, these are things that you get the ability to do. So like I said, if you needed to scale an application um, that you're running for peak times, peak utilization, so for instance, you're running an HR application and it's time to renew your HR benefits or whatever, and you needed to scale that environment, you could do, literally do it on the fly, scale it up for that month of November as everybody's registering you, and scale it back down. You only pay for that peak once a year versus, like we said earlier, you buy out for that peak utilization from a capital server expenditure. You're not doing that, you're only doing that application one time a year instead of buying it all up front for that one time a year. Um, service level agreements, we talked about that a little bit. Um, five nines availability end to end from Time Warner all the way to the prim fiber connection all the way to the cloud availability 99.99. So Physical and virtual uh, security, proven experts um, are, you know, when we say physical security, our data centers, uh, our tier three data centers, uh, biometric hand scanners, bulletproof glass, armed security guards, you're not getting in uh, on, the, on the physical side. And also when we talk about physical, you can have physical firewalls, uh, you can have virtual firewalls. Physical firewalls being managed by yourself and managed by Navisite. Virtual firewalls, same same thing. We, we'll get into managed cloud versus self-service cloud here in this minute. So, like I said, two delivery two delivery models: um, the self-service model and the managed model. Um, self-service model. I mean, literally, when you build out that virtual environment, you get assigned an IP address. You hit that IP address, and it's going to look just like your 2012 Windows Server, 2008 Windows Server when you hit it. Um, you'll, go, you'll pop into it and you'll be, boom, there's your screen. Um, you load software just like you would today to it. Um, you run applications just as you would today um, on that server. All of our cloud nodes have a 10 gig port coming in and out, so we're literally going at the speed of what your connection is. Um, so bandwidth, pretty much unlimited bandwidth. On the managed cloud, that's a pretty much an application where you set it leave it. We manage the pretty much that total environment for you. You're not worried about billing servers. You're not worried about migrating that data. We're doing everything for you with the exception of you're managing that application and doing any upgrades of that manage that application yourself. And we'll dig a little bit deeper and give you a better idea, uh, a visual of what. So in the traditional uh, hosting environment, and that's, and that's more of a managed server where we, you know, here's your physical server, we're managing for you in, in the cloud or our data center. Um, you're going to manage the operating system, you're going to load the operating system, whether it's a, you know, a virtualized operant, VMware, Hyper-V, and then you're stacking it with a, a Linux or a Microsoft product, you're managing the network side of it. Uh, the hardware and the physical side uh, is all managed uh, by, by the Navisite side. side. Like I said, users, applications, and tools. Um, the data side of it, that's the traditional managed hosting environment. And the infrastructure as a service environment, 
Um, like I said, the two, 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 two different models that we have is self-service and the managed cloud. Um, in the self-service model, NavSite is managing pretty much um, the network, the hardware, and the physical infrastructure itself. You're still managing the operating system if you want to do that. So in the, in the self-service world, you can manage as much or as little as you want to manage. Um, so monitoring backups, security, um, we, we encompass that in as a product that we, we also do. In the managed cloud environment, the only thing that you're really managing is that application itself. That's your responsibility. Everything else falls on to an outside. That's a set and go. You know, there's strict rules about making changes uh, and change process in that. Any questions on that so far? Any structures and service? So I mentioned our, our, our data centers, our nine data centers, uh, tier three data centers, high speed internet connectivity through multiple providers. Uh, multiple connectivity providers, basically, we will take any carrier, anybody's IP uh, into our data center. So basically what I'm saying is if you're not the Time Warner Cable footprint, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're running off of Verizon MPLS or AT&T MPLS and that's what you want to make that private connection back, you can do that. If you're on Time Warner Cable, you can do a private connection end-to-end -end, uh, on our network. You have private IP from the cloud all the way to your, your network. And that's to totally private. Um, 24 by 7, 365, East Coast, West Coast, Knox. We talked a little bit about security framework involved, uh, some of the, the, the physical security. Uh, redundant power supplies, battery backup generators, um, diesel uh, supply for two weeks in the power outage. Um, you know, on reserve today, uh, at each of the data centers, we have a two-week reserve for power. We are out of power um, on all of our data centers. So they're pretty robust, um, and we, you know, would love to show you uh, our data centers. We got, if you wanted to go see our data centers, they're approximately 200,000 square feet per data center. They're massive, and our closest one that uh, you could visit would be in Charlotte. So I mean, that's. Uh, really wanted to see it. Um, what I'm going to do now um, is take you through a, a six minute demo. I would normally do a live demo myself, but I can't go as fast and do it as well as uh, the person that's getting ready to show you this. So it's, uh, let's crank that up. And Thank you. 
Android and commercial applications, or vApps. vApps include everything required to power an application. For traditional three-tier vApp, this includes web servers, database servers, and networks. On the vApps screen, users can see a list of all vApps along with their key attributes, such as allocated storage capacity. As with the data centers, users can create a new vApp by clicking the Create button and then following the prompts. Selecting an existing vApp displays a diagram of its networks and virtual machines, or VMs. Clicking once on a VM opens a pop-up window showing its key attributes, such as allocated resources. Clicking a second time brings up a screen that allows users to directly manage the VM's attributes. While NaviCloud Director is designed to support simple, robust VM management for self-service users, NaviSet's team of experts can also provide full VM management as an add-on service for an additional cost. For customers who prefer to manage their own VMs, users can power off or suspend a VM from a simple drop-down menu. On this same screen, users can tweak the VM's resource allocations, like memory, by clicking the gear icon next to the attribute and then typing a new value. CD-ROMs and other media types can be loaded via the media drop-down. Admins can also access the online server console for troubleshooting. At any time, users can review a list of VM changes from the My Tasks pop-up on the bottom right of the screen. Users can also gain further insight into a VM by viewing its performance over time in a simple chart. Viewing and altering a VM's drives is made simple through the hardware screen. Users can add new disks or delete existing disks with little more than a few clicks. They can also alter the size of an existing drive by clicking the gear icon next to its name and entering a new capacity. Behaviors are one of Navicon Director's most powerful features. Manually configuring a VM to be accessible to the internet can be complicated. Instead, users can add the public service behavior and a simple, step-by-step wizard will walk them through the process. To make a VM accessible to other VMs in the environment, users can add the internal service behavior. At both the VM and the app level, users can toggle on automatic backups with optional off-site replication to protect their environment. Users can also create ad hoc VM snapshots. VM snapshots can be easier to revert back if an upgrade has an undesired outcome. Beyond Navicloud Director's primary screens, users can view the Network Overview screen, which shows how all VMs are networked together. Another view, VMs, displays a list of all the VMs in the environment. Filtering adds particular value to this view. For example, users can find all the VMs running Windows Server 2012 by searching for 2012, and can then export this list into a CSV file for further examination. While Navicloud Director comes preloaded with a selection of VM and VApp templates, users can also turn their existing VMs or VApps into custom templates. Templates save users from having to configure VMs and VApps from scratch. Everything available through Navicloud Director is listed on a virtual array cover and built on a point system. At the end of the month, all points accrued are converted into dollars. Within the billing section, users can view usage by month and see where points were spent from the vData center level to a more granular level, such as a specific VM's memory allocation. To better stay on top of spending, admins can also turn on alerts to notify them if VMs exceed certain point thresholds. Even with all the functionality NaviCloud Director provides, there may be times when users will want to leverage existing tools or other aspects of VMware's vCloud Director. That's why the platform provides portal access to VMware's vCloud Director and native access to vCloud Director's API. In addition to the standard NaviCloud Director functionality, admins can enable add-ons such as cloud to cloud replication, backups, monitoring, and antivirus protection. Add-ons can be configured on a VM by VM or VApp by VApp basis and are designed to integrate seamlessly. For more information on NaviSite's NaviCloud Director infrastructure as a service platform, or to schedule a live NaviCloud Director demo, please visit our website at navisite.com or contact us at webinfo at navisite.com. So, if you guys want to see a deeper dive and get into some of the firewalling, the VPN, um, some of the intricate stuff about the networking side of it, you know, we can, we can definitely schedule. Like I said, she goes through and she does a six minute overview for me to crank it up, it'll take me six minutes. That's why I put the video on there. But, um, you know, there's a lot of detail that she did not uh, get into there, you know, from a security, from a VPN. 
uh, perspective from a VLANing perspective, intradata uh, storage. There's a lot of stuff uh, that, that go along that wasn't covered here, but um, some of the um, you know the vCloud director that you can pop into if you're more comfortable with uh, director than you know portal. So it's yeah. A lot, of, a lot of intricate stuff that it wasn't covered, but that's a very high level. It gives you an idea of what um, what our vCloud GUI interface looks like. So, um, you know, a lot of times what what we're seeing is, you know, moving to the cloud is, is challenging uh, in a lot of different ways. Sometimes you're not virtualized. Um, you know, how do I how do I virtualize my application to get it to the cloud? Um, you know, a lot of times you, you might be virtualized, but you know, how do I migrate you know an application to the cloud? You know, this is you know where a lot of a lot of times people hesitate and go, hey, we're not so sure about this because how are we going to get it there? Once we get it there, is it going to run properly? So you know we've come up with an, an onboarding service, and there's you know several different levels. Um, you know we have the self-service onboarding, and we provide resources. To, you to, to do that yourself, um, and actually, I uh, say it's a self-service onboarding. Um, if you want to move applications to the cloud, I'm going to get an engineer to help you get the ball to, to get you started. Um, we're going to do a, a, an onboarding session for you. It says, here's the cloud, here's how it works, here's the feature functionality, and help you build out a few servers and put some applications out there. Um, that's our guided onboarding combination of guided and self-service, and then we have a custom managed so if there's like large applications that you want to get out there, and we will we'll come up with a scope of work, put it out there, and then go out there and, and actually do the work or do it with you. So yeah, getting, getting to the cloud, uh, an infrastructure as a service, um, you know, that's something that we've seen and have addressed the, the need for that uh, when we provide somebody the infrastructure the service, they sit there and look at it and go, we're not so sure about how to make this happen. So we're going to help you make it happen. So I mean, this, this kind of goes into, um, you know, how do I get my applications to the cloud? Like I said, um, the overview, you know, the, the, the V data centers and the, and the V apps are kind of like groups. And so within each V app, it might be a different department. Uh, we help you design that, lay it out, um, get the get the construct of your virtual data center uh, in place. Um, and so, you know, we've built in capacity with a vCloud connector or an API interface with that application. Um, and then also aligning, um, you know, private cloud, whether it's on premises, you've got to co locate it somewhere else. Um, to, to the cloud in, in a hybrid environment. So these are some of the things that you have to look at when you're removing legacy applications out of the cloud. So we talked about, and I don't know how much you mentioned about replication to the cloud. So if you're running in a, a VMware environment currently today, um, you can replicate to the cloud for you know little to no money when it comes to saying, hey, what's the DR plan look like? Um, mission critical applications to the cloud. Um, you know, with, uh, with some of our, our partners that we have out there, um, you know, you're literally paying just for the storage. You're not paying for the compute resources until you, you fell over to that. A lot of times when people fell over, um, you know, to a replicated virtual machine, they don't fell back because they're like, hey, we're out in the cloud, we're running, it looks good, and they, they normally stick in, stick there and, and work it that way. Um, at that point, then they'll do another replication, cloud to cloud replication, instead of on-premise to cloud replication. So, it's, uh, you know, one of the, our partner that does that is actually here today, uh, Legos, and they, uh, they do a great job. It's literally within that cloud portal is a checkbox, and then so when you build that virtual server, um, it automatically creates the replication server and it's you know, pre-built for you uh, as you go. So, very, very easy to do a, a build-over scenario in the cloud to cloud. And, uh, it's not very difficult to do on-premise to cloud as well. So, that's, that's 
nanosite infrastructure as a service, cloud, cable, cloud business unit. Um, there are any questions that I can answer for anybody? How long have you been in this business? So Navisite's been in business since 1998. Um, we started our first uh, cloud node with our Navisite Cloud Sphere uh, in 2010. That was our managed. Uh, we followed it up in 2012 uh, with our Navisite Cloud Director. Uh, that was part of what you saw today as our self-service portal. So we've been doing um, cloud since 2010. Um, yeah, you know, well, what is cloud? You know, but that's infrastructure. We've been doing infrastructure as a service. We've been doing cloud um, from a, a managed uh, hosting perspective since the early early uh, 2000s. We managed applications, you know, before then. Um, we were acquired. So we were acquired by Time Warner Cable in 2011 to become their cloud business unit um, due to mergers and acquisitions and whatnot, we still haven't changed our name, but hopefully uh, that'll, that'll change soon with the, uh, the Comcast merger. Uh, charter. charter, I'm sorry. That, you know, the old one was part of the reason we have to uh, charter merger. So in the cold case, I mean, um, how does it work, man? Can you the steel very much? Yep. How does that function work? So the companies that, that we have that are co-located with us currently today, uh, you know, that's um, from from a North Carolina perspective, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, you know, our data centers, um, our data centers are located that you can co-locate in uh, Andover, Massachusetts. We have two in Massachusetts. We have two in California, uh, Chicago, New York, um, Texas. We have uh, Joaquin, UK. And Wilhelm, UK as well. So we can use one in Charlotte. Uh, the, the, the one in Charlotte is just currently a cloud, a cloud node. Um, that is for our, our own internal applications, but all of our data centers are designed and built uh, to that specification. Um, and when I say internal applications, our cloud node is an internal application that we sell. So that's where we keep one of our cloud nodes as well. Um, but it's a, it's a facility. If you, so our, like I said, we have uh, Santa Clara, San Jose. Uh, Wilmington and Andover, Massachusetts, um, Chicago, and they're all built to that specification in um, Charlotte. So that's why I said if you wanted to tour that data center, give you a good idea of what that data center, what our other data centers look like as well. So do they all fill over to each other and one goes down? Absolutely. Yeah. So especially in the, in the cloud environment, um, you know, if you're if you're co-locating equipment uh, in one of those data centers, you know, your equipment is where your equipment is, and if that was to fail or shut down for whatever reason, like I said, it's built not to. Um, but in order to fail for whatever reason, you have co-located equipment in there. That's where your equipment is. Um, so if a nuclear blast happens in that data center, you're, you're out of business. Unless you have it replicated to San Jose, California. Yeah. So, um, so that's a... Uh, well, I'm looking at the last DMV that you have when you replicate now. Even if you don't co-locate, you have the DMVs where you can replicate Yep. Does that mean spell works to the other Yes, it does. Um, so, in this environment, yeah. So, what you have, so let's say that you have, you know, here's your customer private network, all right? That could be cloud to cloud. That could be your private premises co located somewhere in North Carolina that your co location provider take it to the cloud, whether it's Andover, Massachusetts, Santa Clara, California. Um, in the cloud to cloud environment, yeah, you could say cloud here, cloud there, cloud east coast, cloud west coast. We also do backups, and then we will do a redundant backup. So let's say you did customer cloud, you back up your data, and then we will replicate that backup to west coast. We're almost more for like on frame cloud. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so that's I mean that's literally what this is right here in a VM in a VMware environment. That's the, the one. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking to build out a VMware environment with Cisco ECS, but it hasn't made a cloud Beautiful, yeah. I'd love to, love to get a little bit deeper with you on that okay. and show you see what we can do. Um, I, I know you guys have been talking to Jen about testing this, and I know you said we purchased some stuff, so um, mm -hmm. we're a Citrus shop. Yep. And um, for me, I don't know if Davis has this, is DR. Like, we don't have any 
infrastructure off-site. We know. Um, what would the process be? If we did do opt from our cloud or premise to the cloud, what would the process be um, for for the replication to happen and to also convert it to VMware? Yeah. So is is this environment that we're talking about here? Um, like I said, VMware replication. But we can come up with other solutions. It's not going to be. Uh, I mean, this is off. The, this is off the shelf box solution that we have. That's really, really easy to, to use and function as part of our portal. But we can come up with, you know, it's the cloud. You can do yeah, just about it. Yeah. You can do just about anything you want to do. I don't even know if you guys have even talked about the hours. I know. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to get seven. you know, get them pinned down on one topic, but. You know, we, we get there eventually. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, we got, I think last week, some uh, storage for backup uh, going on offsite. So, and we'll, uh, we'll. Does that include a prospect or a I'm not sure. Well, we'll yeah, have to we'll talk with, with Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's part, part, of, part of what it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. It'll probably be a virtual, virtual private line from here to there. To some extent. One gig or is there 700 gig? I don't know. That's not that's not my that's not one of my deals. That's one of my counterparts. I'll have to check in on him. See, but yeah, that's uh. Well, that's a it, what we do when we're your provider. It's in in the end. Yep. Yeah. It's not five ninety liability. Yeah. Connectivity. Yep. Right. Because we found the other day that our, our like the cost coming in only hundred eight. So even if it goes out, they're still restricted. But that's an that's an offsite. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, you might be restricted to 100 meg there. I think you guys also have other providers. Uh, you just need to set up lease cost routing on it and figure out who's going where at the time. So, on your routers, yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Um, hey, Marcel. Yeah. <laughs> Marcel's from the app. Uh, okay. So don't forget about our happy hour tonight. If you can make it, please do. And uh, if you guys want to stop by our uh, our booth if you haven't already, and grab some goodies. Uh, we'd love to give you some uh, trinkets, some swag. Anybody wants to come talk to you? Absolutely. That's uh, I think we talked to John Wyatt a few times. Right? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just that's something we need to do as well. Yep. Yeah, so I think you you see the, the replication service. Like I said, the only thing you really buy at that point, I mean, it's pay for use. Put your storage out there, you're going to pay for that all the time. But that compute resource, only only if you fell over. So I'd love to show you how we can do there. Sure. I'll get, I'll get Ken to contact us on that. Okay. Time. Thank you for uh, attending.